Hi, Facebook friends. Helen Arcantu here, CEO of the YWCA of Northern New Jersey. My pronouns are she, her, hers. And I'm so happy to have some time with you today on this Thursday. And for our regulars, you know that Thursday is when we take our YWTV platform, which is about educating and, and inspiring our community and share the mic now on Thursdays with Black women in our community to elevate and share their stories. And um, it's been my great honor to talk to so many amazing women since we started this effort. And um, today is another great conversation ahead for sure. Um, and so uh, I am so uh, grateful to have our guest today, um, Shirley Bio, um, who is with us from Paris, France. Um, she is with the, the, the beautiful green background uh, behind her um, uh, is, is nestled in another part of another time zone, another part, another uh, continent. Um, but we are connected for sure um, because of her mission, her movement, and uh, her inspiration. Um, welcome, Shirley. Hello. Hi. I'm so delighted to be with you today. Thank you, Ilan, for this opportunity to talk about Martinique and Banana Movement. Yes, yes. I love to talk about it. And before we jump into it, I want to tell our viewers a little bit about you and your background. Um, for those of you who don't know, Shirley was born in Djibouti, East Africa, um, to a Martinique mother and a French father. Um, she is the founder of organic skincare brand um, Cadalis, um, and she grew up, as I said, between East Africa and the Caribbean. Um, from her childhood, her parents were activists, they were very connected to societal issues, and it was very important to them and now to her to make a difference um, in every day of their lives. Um, she founded uh, Cadalis in 2012. Um, it is the first eco-conscious Caribbean company and biotech venture based on banana science, <laughs> um, specializing in upcycling banana agro agri water into organic and patented bioactivities that promote skin health and renewal. Catalyse is the reflection of Shirley's very specific vision to create a caring, eco-conscious luxury beauty company founded on three pillars, circular economy, green chemistry, and inclusive capitalism. Every planting partner is a shareholder. Um, she's been inspired by French Caribbean traditional medicine and backed by 10 years of research. Um, the Catalyse helps preserve the natural environment by upcycling agro waste and developing new active ingredients that concentrate the banana tree's precious molecules. She is very active in her communities. She focuses her efforts on helping young women develop and reach their potential. She has received many awards and accolades over the years for her work as a skincare pioneer, a visionary leader, a community activist, and she has been um, recognized from the president of the French Republic. And again, thank you so much for making the time um, from across the country to join us today to talk about this amazing work that you're doing, Shirley. Thank you. It was a very um, impressive your summary on me. Well, you know, I, I always tell our, our um, guests that it's important to soak it all in because you did it all. And, um, you know, as women, we don't always, uh, you know, we don't always stand in that space. And um, so I, I think it's a great opportunity for you to have a moment to really reflect on what you've accomplished. And as, I, as I'm reading it, um, you know, I am so impressed on so many levels and interested on so many levels, um, you know, in, in, in this work. So tell me, how did you get on this journey? I mean, I understand the activism piece and, and where that falls in, but some of this work is, there's science involved. I mean, you know, there's art, the creativity and art involved. I mean, so many different facets of an individual, you know, that usually an individual is in one space, but you seem to have taken so many and pulled them together. Um, I, in fact, um, I love, I'm a very passionate person and I love science. So, in fact, when I decided to found it, Canalis, it was just after uh, in Martinique, I was working in Martinique at this moment, and Martinique was experiencing a very terrible social and economic crisis due to the high cost of living 
and uh, the huge social inequalities that we still have in Martinique. So for me at this moment, I had two choice, uh, either leave my island as many did and uh, or stay and try to do something and fight for a new vision uh, of um, the development, not only economic, economically, but also the relationship between the different communities. So, in fact, the purpose behind the project of Cadalis, it was really a way to find, to find a way to bring together people, the farmers, uh, poor and rich, or poor, uh, black or, 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 or white, and, uh, to, and to, to try to have an impact to reduce at the same time the inter intergenerational gaps but also the in interracial gaps that we still have in Martinique, but in a positive way. <laughs> so, and for me, banana was perfect for that because it's so huge in my island. This is the first private uh, employer of uh, my island. Everyone <laughs> or have a, someone uh, in our family that work for banana industry and it is very key also because without banana uh, sector, our container will go back in France empty. empty. So the banana sector, it's um, combined our history, and I will explain you just after why, our culture, but also our economy. So it is very strategic for us to, um, for me, to highlight this uh, amazing, plant uh, that has a, this so amazing uh, story in Martinique. Just to, to come back in the story, in history, in uh, 1736, a royal law put mandatory the fact that every slave owner, they have to plant 25 banana tree per slave owner. So as you can imagine, three centuries ago, our banana story become, became, uh, because it was the first plant that the slave are able to plant uh, freely in a free way. So, and that is why in Martinique we have this so um, amazing and very uh, close story and relationship with this uh, plant because for us is, uh, it is at the center, even in our garden, it's the first plant that we plant in our garden. So we love the banana tree. So the idea to work on that it was during a dream. <laughs> I don't know why I dream a lot on the, um, the banana tree. And I imagine in my, um, during my night, um, it's a pity because we produce 20% of agro waste each year. It represents in Martinique uh, 40,000 tons of ugly banana. I just talk about the banana, not the flower and the, and the leaf and the stem, but we produce um, a, a huge quantity of agro waste each year, and we don't do anything with that. And with the climate change, um, year after year, we have hurricane, we have a lot of um, um, uh, natural uh, external causes that uh, uh, have an impact because they produce more and more agro waste. So. For me, it was really an issue to um, and to find a, a solution for that, especially because we are a small island with limited resources. So for me, take care to find a solution to um, um, give a second change to this agro waste was for me the perfect solution for my island because at the same time, we, we will be able to create an added value uh, for the population, we will be able to um, um, fight or to find a way to um, to be uh, more proactive against climate change, and also it allows us to highlight our traditional pharmacopoeia. And our traditional pharmacopoeia is officially recognized in France and in Europe only since 2011. Since the slavery period, it was officially forbidden for us to do business with our plants. We are authorized officially 
to uh, do commerce with our plants only since uh, 11 years. I know it's amazing, but it is true. So, uh, so, uh, so, as you can imagine, for me, banana was more than just a fruit and just an ugly fruit. It was uh, the symbol of so many things. Uh, so for me, it was the perfect fruit. So I decided to launch a research program um, 10 years ago to characterize the different components inside the banana tree and then to, um, to highlight the benefits of these different ingredients on skin, but not, on, not only because we're also working on uh, metabolic syndrome, so problem of diabetes, high pressure, and so on and so on, and also uh, food as a food supplement. So we, we have a, a lot of data on the, from the fruit, peel, pulp, the peel, the pulp, the flowers, the leaves, the trunk, and so on and so on. And we, de we developed during this 10 uh, past uh, years a, um, a specialization in eco extraction, eco extraction. So it's green chemistry, but we don't use chemical solvents to extract molecules. We only use new technology like. Uh, microwaves, ultrasound, ultrasound, critical water, uh, this new technology that don't use a lot of um, energy and that protect the plant. So you can um, concentrate uh, deeper these molecules, but without impact on, the, on nature. So it allows us to be very innovative and, and scientific, but when we produce our raw materials, we don't have waste. So we don't produce another waste. Everything can be reused. Everything can be uh, um, transformed. And for me, this is really uh, the target of my mission is to um, produce innovative raw materials, but with zero waste and zero impact on nature. And as you said just before, female uh, empowerment is very important for me. So I also decided to um, highlight Uh, career in science for, uh, for, for female uh, from the West Indies, but not only. Um, and because there are not a there are few uh, female in science, and for me it's a pity because um, maybe we are more conscious and um, more benevolent, more generous, and we have another vision of uh, the future and the environment. So for me, female are perfect for that, <laughs> to work on science, but on eco-conscious uh, uh, projects. So this is a part of my commitment. And the last one, you talk also about that, 100% of the banana grower of Martinique, everyone, they are part of the company. In minority, but they are part of the company because I also really believe that we can do business and, and do capitalism but we can also be more benevolent and more inclusive and try to create an ecosystem to share with the person that produce the, the plants. So uh, for me, what, maybe because my parents were unionists, I have another vision of the business. We can do business, but I think it's important to, to be more committed as an entrepreneur, and to be more game changer. Is it the, 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 the word for that? Yeah, I think we, we need to impulse this new uh, way to do, uh, to do business and to run a company uh, by, and be more ethical, uh, conscious. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I have to say, I, mean, I, I you know, I, I thought it when I was, you know, reading your bio, but even more so now listening to you, I'm just so struck by your understanding of the environment, your understanding of, uh, you know, um, that kind of social justice piece of the environment, your understanding of economics, your understanding of science, your clearly your understanding of art, you know, your entrepreneurship skills, your visionary skills. Um, and I do think, you know, to your point, you know, that is something that women do bring to, to this environment that is, new and different and why more women need to be supported and elevated um you know to doing work like you're doing because you know the the expansiveness and the holisticness of your thinking um is 
just not something that you see, you know, as a norm, for sure, when someone is moving forward on, on a product. Um, so I'm curious, because we have so many um, young women that we bring through our organization at the YWC of Northern New Jersey. We have an uh, amazing um, coordinator who works with our girls, and she puts through a, a, a number of really um, impactful uh, STEM programs um, to raise young women that are having this science mindset. Um, and that's not the norm. We, we, don't, we don't have a history around the world, really, not even just in this country in the United States, of really pushing women into a science space or economics for that matter. Um, how, how did you, just thinking for you know, women that are trying to encourage younger women in their lives now into that space, um, and also, you know, grown women who are, you know, have an idea, but it may not be their first um, knowledge base. You know, how, how do you move into those areas? I mean, how did, how did you, you know, how did they all come to you that you were able to put all these pieces together? I mean, is it really from your upbringing and your parents? Was it something that you, uh, someone in school moved you there? So to be honest with you, I'm a hyperactive, hyperactive person. And during maybe my young uh, years, uh, the teacher didn't understand my the way I, I'm thinking. So, so um, it was very difficult for me because I am so curious of everything, and I know it's trend, but I'm able to switch from uh, a financial uh, work into science to marketing. So I love everything, and I sleep only two or three uh, hours per night. So I have a lot of time and for me, the life is too short and you have so many things that you can learn every day, even with um, when I meet someone. <laughs> so I love, uh, you know, relationship and connection with other people. So I know I'm a little bit uh, uh, special because um, I love, I love, really, I love work and understand a lot of things. And Canalys, for me, it really the first time is that I'm totally uh, myself. So I do what I want to do. Even, uh, for example, uh, I, I, am a, I, I am an economic, economic and I have a high degree in economics, so I'm not from science, uh, even after my high school, but I love read uh, scientific studies. So I write my, my scientific program. I'm able to run my R&D uh, company. Even I don't have... Um, the perfect diploma for that. For me, if you are very curious, you can learn very fast. So, and you talk about uh, female empowerment. Uh, I think because I'm, for me, I love work with other women. I'm not in competition with other women because um, I love highlight other persons. So I'm very generous. So um, I have a lo lot of young uh, women that work for me in science. So because there is not a lot of women in science. So I try to find them very early, directly at school. And I train them to, be, to have a PhD. So, and to, to have this new generation of uh, uh, scientific female, in fact. So even I, it's very difficult to find older one, I prefer to invest on younger one. So it takes more time because you have to train them and to, um, but, for me, uh, this uh, investment, it's uh, amazing because uh, these uh, young scientific females are so uh, happy um, to work with me and uh, she, she gives a lot to the company. Uh, so I'm also lucky because I have partnership with the French uh, Faculty of Pharmacy, uh, one with an expertise in science and uh, the characterization of molecules and another one um, in eco extraction, so we have a lot of mentor, and a lot of mentor are men, <laughs> mainly in science. But all my team, we are one hundred percent a female team. So, um, so for me, I have no limit except uh, the twenty four hours per day. <laughs> but uh, I just want to try to do something uh, before it was too late for me, uh, and um, to try to. Um, um, I have a vision, so I want to concretize, concretize, concretize my vision. For me, it's my goal. So, uh, and it makes me very happy to do that. Even if it's not easy every day, 
but um, yeah, be active. It's uh, very important for me. Well, you know, there's so many things you said in there that I just, you know, want to, you know, lift up. I mean, you you talked about your curiosity, and I think that, you know, it's. It, I'm so glad that you talked about that. I think, you know, that is one of the things, especially with little girls, we tell them to, you know, be polite, be quiet, and to, you know, um, you know, to to kind of uh, hold it in. Uh, yeah. But you know, clearly, um, you're a perfect example of how letting your curiosity out. Um, you know, created really a, a movement. I mean, because this is very different. Um, you know, this is you're in a very different space than anyone, you know, most people, you know, in your area of work. And uh, I also really appreciate and we, we talked about this with yesterday's guest, too, about women in the workplace, the importance of apprenticeship and mentorship and how, you know, we really do have to um, support that next generation coming up so that they do things differently um, because what we're doing isn't working. So I, I really appreciate how much time you invest in that and how it's such a core for your work. And um, and clearly, I think we probably share this. It looks like you don't sleep much either. Um, I'm guessing from the way your your brain fires and um, and all you have going at all times. So before, um, you know, I, I want to ask a few things. Um, one of them is, you know, obviously you've focused your entire, you know, this, this amazing beauty line around um, and, and Catalyse around bananas. And, and, and you so eloquently explained why that was an important piece at your core. Um, you know, so many of us think about a banana as a snack, right, that we eat and don't think about all the layers of benefits. Um, so, and, and then the other piece is, you know, the green and clean beauty mindset, because that's something we're starting to see more of, but it's still, it's still new. Um, so can you talk to us a little bit about what are the beauty benefits of banana and, and why is it so important to really rethink our makeup choices and our beauty choices and what we're putting, you know, on our skin and why the green and clean movement is really where we should all be focused? So we use in the traditional pharmacopoeia in the, the West Indies, we use, and not only because it's the same in Asia and also in Africa or in South America, we use banana tree, especially the peel, if you have uh, eczema, psoriasis, or acne, because the banana tree has a uh, healing properties. So it's a very um, repairing plant. So, so in Canalis, we for Canalis we developed three different ingredients from the peel of the yellow banana, the pink, and the green one. And every different color, we don't have the same composition. So we focus on oil because what I love on oil, we have a lot of uh, omega and vitamin E and so on. But you have phytosterol, and phytosterol they are the same. A molecule structure that DHEA, so it's perfect to uh, uh, repair your skin, but also to have um, uh, anti-inflammation action. So, and polyphenol, it's more like a shield to protect from uh, external uh, aggression, but phytosterol allow to protect and to firm and to uh, repair. So. The three ingredients that we develop, and we are the only one to do that, it's to extract the oil of the, the fruit for now. So the green is perfect for young skin because it allows to have um, to have an impact of acne, to refine your skin. The yellow ingredient is perfect for mature skin. So I use it because I have close to uh, 50 years old. So I use uh, <laughs> so I use the yellow one because uh, um, the, our ingredients promote the synthesis of collagen, elastin, and so on. So it's perfect to firm your skin. And the pink one, it's a new one. Uh, I know in English you, you said red banana. In French, we said pink banana. It's a banana very rich in routine. It's a flavonoid, flavonoid uh, molecules that are perfect uh, for um, as an antioxidant. But also, uh, we have a depigmentation effect for uh, dark spot. So the pink is for the glow and to reduce uh, your dark spots. So three different colors for not the same purpose. So every time I will develop a new ingredient, we develop 
formula around these ingredients. So our, for, our product formulation depend of the benefits of our banana ingredients. So banana is the first point because now we are now I think we have more credibility uh, in Martinique and in other countries because I think at the beginning my vision of the business was maybe too audacious. <laughs> so now I think everybody is in phases, especially with the COVID. I think a lot of people really understand that it is important to take care of, uh, of um, herself, but also the nature. So they are looking for more eco-conscious products. So now we also are working with other industry, like for example, juice or jam, to collect the agro waste and to create other ingredients with other fruit like papaya, guayaba, maracuja, acerola, and so on. So our mission will be to, to become uh, upcycling or raw materials uh, supplier, uh, very eco-conscious and inclusive. So, so you mentioned before that um, which type of product we have to use on our skin. Personally, I always uh, use natural product. Organic, it's, it can be a, um, um, a way to select your product, but natural for me is very important. I prefer natural compared to conventional uh, product. I think for me now, uh, we have so many knowledge. I don't understand why we still use petroleum chemical product in clean formulation. For me, we have to stop because uh, put plastic on your face, I don't see the interest. The, the plants are so powerful, we can use, uh, and we don't, we don't need to use the plant from uh, for the for the human food we can only focus on agro waste there are so many agro waste in the world if we are able only to transform them uh, we we will be able to produce innovative ingredients but more conscious ingredients so in my point of view uh, if you want to take care of you and also the planet please uh, select a conscious company or natural brand this is, for me, the minimum. Well, I appreciate you sharing that detail. One of our guests who are watching, Erin, is also just thanking us because she said she had no idea about the different types and colors of bananas and all of their healing properties. And I think, you know, many people don't, and that's why it's so important to be talking about it. And, and many people may not understand that a lot of the makeup brands and skincare brands that are conventional and that are, you know, the names that are historic that people have been using are really filled with toxins and plastics and, you know, waste that, you know, we're putting on our skin that's seeping into our body and is impacting yeah. our health on a daily basis. Um, so, you know, changing to, and I thank you for making that distinction. So if we want to make a change in our products, we should be looking for what language? Natural, not organic. We should be looking for natural um, skincare and natural. Much, yeah, natural, organic. Organic is a certification. Well, the most part of our products are organic, but sometimes when we want to be um, innovative very fast, we launch products that are 100% natural because we don't have time to wait the certification. But after, right. one year after, we yeah. have the certification. So sometimes... The fact uh, be organic, certified, it's sometimes it's a question of uh, cost and time. But you also you can also find beautiful brands that are natural. So, and we are you. All, I think it's important to better understand the different labels because sometimes you can be organic. It depends on your certification. If you are organic from Cosmos, for example, it's a very good label. If you are organic with a, a ISO norm, uh, I don't remember, maybe it's a 17, uh, 7, I don't remember the, exactly. Uh, it's a, it's a, it's a, a certification that allow to be organic, but use chemical. So, you know, sometimes there is some labels that are yeah. not very clear. So, so you have to go deeper, just on, not only uh, see the labels, but it, it comes from which uh, company. For me, Cosmos is yes. one of the best in the world. Um, you uh, natural, natural means everything because petrol is natural. It comes from nature. 
yes, <laughs> so, yes. So we have to go a little deeper i hear you uh, you have to go deeper in the in the in the inky formula and and to better understand and for example an example of uh, allergen for example in once uh, one of our fragrances that we use uh, essential oil we have um, uh, some allergen and one of them is uh, it, it has the same it has the same inky that another one that are chemical and you use in uh, uv protection so and it is it has a bad notes but it's also the same inky for the fragrances of uh ylang ylang jasmine and thierry so sometimes we have to explain to the consumer yes we have this type of allergen, but it is natural. It comes from the, the flower. It's not from a chemical uh, uh, origin. So that is why on our website, we try to put a lot of information to allow the consumer to better understand our formula and the different uh, labels uh, and the different inky. So for Kedalis, we have several labels. We are vegan, vegan, uh, organic, creative free, so we try to have a lot of labels just to reassure the consumer and to try to give uh, them how, may, how many information uh, they need to have to be more uh, con confident in the to have a better confidence in the, our brand the product. Yes, for sure. And I I personally can't wait to try them. I, I'm like you. I'm. Um, little older in my 50s, but I um, definitely appreciate and I'm also looking forward to trying the youth, um, you know, with as my daughter's, you know, getting she's younger and it's a great opportunity. And I love I you know, I love everything you're saying. You talked a little bit about some of the other fruits that you're thinking about that are from your area that you're exploring before we leave each other. Um, and this time has gone so quickly. You've shared so much. I personally am so inspired and I know our guests are. I can tell as well. Um, What's next? I mean, I can I can tell a little bit from what you've talked about, but um, you know, wh what else are you planning uh, when you're not sleeping and you're fine? <laughs> and you've got so much. I know I can see bursting. You have such a beautiful glow. I have to say, and I can tell that that's not only on the outside but on the inside. Yeah, I, I using I use uh, the pink oil for my glow every day. I love this oil. It's it's a pink banana oil. This one. I'm making I, notes. I'm making notes. <laughs> I use it every day, night and morning before to use my uh, my cream, and uh, this is she's, it is perfect for the glow. So the next step um, for the uh, raw material part, I'm working to establish a factory in Martinique to direct directly produce the raw materials and create uh, technical and scientific uh, jobs. Uh, because we are one of the most poor departments in France. So my, really my mission is to try to improve the, the level of my population. Um, so this is one of the parts. Uh, the other one for the R&D program, we are working to um, develop functional food uh, products. So we are going to go more in health. So beauty was a start, but we try to work on uh, food supplements and other products that to have a more in and out approach and uh, and for the brand we have a lot of new products that will be uh, 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 new uh, in the following months and we are working uh, on a new ingredients based on the flowers this time well that's very very exciting we will be watching and i know lauren is watching too and she's saying how she's so grateful for the transparency of ingredients and knowing how your products are sourced, that that's so important for consumers to ask and to learn about. Um, you know, for our viewers, there's so much more to obviously what Shirley has ahead and to Shirley's story than we could cover here. We have the link here in our comments so you can check out um, the website for Catalise. We also encourage you to follow her on Instagram and on Facebook and on all of her social media channel, channels at Catalyst underscore US. Um, I know I've been following, I'm so uh, looking forward to, I've had my notes about the pink oil and the yellow banana. So I'm gonna go look for, now I have a better sense of which products are good for my skin. And um, you know, really looking forward to, you know, continuing watching you, no pun intended, blossom and, and grow and um, innovate 
and um, you know, really forge a new path, um, not only for women. Um, you know, what you're doing is really revolutionary path. You know, you you know, you're you're definitely elevating women and black women and women of color in the work that you're doing, but you're really you're 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 forging just a new path in. Um, in 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 the area that you you are, and um, it's exciting to see and um, invigorating, you know, to, to really listen to you. So thank you so much for sharing some of your story with us today. And I do hope everyone checks out Shirley Bio and more of um, you know what she has coming. I mean, I can't wait to see the new products as well, and um, and and follow her, uh, you know back and forth where she travels to and, and shares what's next. Thank you so much, Ellen. Thank you, uh, everyone. And I do encourage those of you out there, you have young girls, you send them to our STEM programs. I mean, this is, this, this can be, you know, in the future of a young woman, um, you know, in your life, if we, you know, set them up with the skills and the mindset to be thinking creatively. And when they have ideas and when they're curious, let them talk, let them speak, um, you know, encourage, you know, and them firing on lots of different levels. I can only imagine what Shirley was like younger and, you know, harnessing that into, you know, what a powerhouse, you know, you are today. And um, it just really makes me, it's such a, it's such a message for parents. You know, yeah, you know, encourage, it's very important because I think you're right. We are less bold sometimes compared to men, and we suffer a lot of. Um, it's a uh, it's a syndrome. It's a imposter syndrome. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. imposter syndrome. That's right. Yeah, and when I was young, uh, I remember because I have two uh, sisters, uh, so we are three uh, girls, and and my my father was uh, you know he, he worked for the French army, so he was a little bit sad to have only uh, <laughs> girls. So, so, but he always tried to um, allow us to to um, to not not to not be only um, uh, viewed as a, a, a girl. For example, every summer we we have, we have kind of army a boot camp yes. <laughs> as, a, as a boy, and um, I remember I would love to do a, to to uh, to learn karate. My mother want I dress uh, dance classical dance. I was so sad, so sad. <laughs> and so um, and I love I, for me in my I I, I would love to be a man because for me they are more free compared to uh, to to a, a woman. So but my father understand very soon that I was a little bit different because I don't love a Barbie. I prefer to have the Ken or GI Joe. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So very early, I had um, my first motorcycle, and then I leave Martinique very young, uh, to uh, alone to uh, to go in Martinique to, to went in Paris to uh, study, and uh, it was a pity because uh, you know I, I would love to have a science career, but for me it was not for a girl. So after my my, uh, high, my my one of my diploma, I switched from science to economy because for mm -hmm. me, it, yeah, so, yeah. But now I think there are more opportunities for uh, for female now, and uh, I think everyone are very conscious that it's important to encourage uh, female, and they they yeah. need to be more encouraged. I think. Absolutely, and I I couldn't agree more. And um, you know, as we encourage our young women. Um, they could be the future Shirley Bios for sure, um, because they've been given that space to, uh, you know, to evolve. Shirley, thank you again. I've so enjoyed talking to you, and I'm looking forward to seeing where your brand goes, and um, and uh, you know, letting you know. Like I guess that I plan on 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 getting some, and 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 um, so I want that glow too. <laughs> um, thank you. Thank you, and for our viewers. Merci beaucoup. Merci, au revoir. And for our viewers, um, we hope you join us tomorrow. Um, we have a, a great conversation with Heather Shaza. We'll be talking about heart health. Um, when we're getting ready for Valentine's Day here in the United States. Um, it's not just about chocolates. Um, it's definitely about our hearts and keeping them healthy and strong. Um, you know, Shirley was great today in telling us about what to put on our skin to keep it healthy and strong. Heather's going to talk to us about uh, what we put in our mouth. 
to keep it healthy, keep our heart healthy and strong and, and our activity. So everyone, um, as Shirley said, au revoir. And have, oh. a, have, a, have a, she said it much better than I do, by the way. <laughs> um, but have a lovely day. Be well, enjoy. And, and you know, please suck, suck in this beautiful um, glow of Shirley and carry that inspiration energy with you uh, all through your day today. It's a banana smile. As a banana smile. I love it. Take care, everyone. Be well. Thank you.